Pythagorean tuning is a system of tuning used by all string players intuitively when playing melodies and can be easily learned or taught. It is based solely on a stack of purely tuned perfect fifths. As a result, all perfect intervals are pure and all inharmonic notes have different pitches. Here's how this happens. If we stack our purely tuned perfect fifths, we'll notice that we cannot reach our initial pitch. In this case, instead of reaching C, we reach B sharp, which is a perfect fifth from E sharp and slightly higher than our initial C. The distance between B sharp and C natural is called Pythagorean comma. This Pythagorean comma happens in each pair of inharmonic pitches. Let's say C sharp and D flat. E sharp and F natural, and so on. Pianos and tuners are tuned to equal temperament, meaning that their fifths are not pure. In fact, they are narrowed so that their inharmonic notes have the same sound. In this case, if we follow the circle of fifths, we'll arrive at our initial frequency or a multiple of it. We can see that B sharp and C natural, as well as any other inharmonic pitches in equal temperament, present the exact same frequency. Pythagorean tuning should not be mistaken for the 12-note Pythagorean temperament used by keyboard instruments, limited to 12 sounds only and presenting a false fifth. Let's get started. Step 1. Tune your open strings in perfect fifths. You can only check the open string A with a tuner. No beats should be heard. Tip number one, keep the same frequency daily. Let's say A equals 440 hertz. Step number two, find perfect intervals from open strings. Find perfect intervals from open strings playing both notes together and making sure they are perfectly tuned. Perfect intervals can be unison, octaves, perfect fifths, perfect fourths. Examples Unison Octave And Perfect Fourth Tip number two. When the interval is not perfectly in tune, we can hear some oscillations, also known as beats. When we play two notes simultaneously, let's say A prime equals 440 hertz and A double prime equals 442 hertz, we will perceive the difference of their frequencies as oscillations. In this case, we will hear only two oscillations per second. We also hear oscillations due to the difference of frequencies of the overtones that any two notes may have in common, and this is what helps us tune our instruments. Tip number three. An open string is put into vibration when a note of the same name is played perfectly in tune on a different string. This phenomenon is called sympathetic vibration. For example, octave. Unison. No. Sympathetic vibrations are responsible for activating certain harmonics along the strings, making intonation more easily perceptible. Step 3. Find the next perfect intervals. You should always start from an open string and follow the circle of fifths clockwise or counterclockwise. For example, to find B natural, you can do the following. Same is true for C sharp.
Tip number four. You can memorize pitch and switch fingers or strings so as to reach the same note in different positions. Examples. Step four, use natural harmonics. Use only natural harmonics that form a perfect interval with a string where it is being played. The finger that plays the harmonic should barely touch the string, otherwise pitch will vary accordingly. Examples, compound octave, octave. Compound fifth, A reminder before we move on. As a general rule, any combination of purely tuned notes are told to be in just intonation, regardless of the context. In Pythagorean tuning, all perfect intervals are purely tuned, whereas most other intervals, like thirds and sixths, are naturally not pure. Step five, use pivot notes. Use any note in just intonation as a pivot note in order to reach a perfect interval. Note, pitches shown in purple in the next pages do not belong to the Pythagorean tuning, but serve only as a bridge between perfect intervals in that system. Examples. From G to C, which is a perfect fourth, you can insert an E natural in just intonation. You can also insert any other consonant pitch. For instance, Tip number four. Listen to the main combination tones or tartini tones, which occur as a result of the difference of two notes being played simultaneously. If notes A and E are played together, A being 440 hertz, and E being 660 hertz, the resulting tone will be 660 minus 440, which will equal 220 hertz. Or one octave below our initial A. Here's a summary table containing some of the main Tartini notes, just for reference. Note. Double stops must be played loudly so that the combination tones are well heard. Step seven, build your scales. Build your own scales so that you can easily check your intonation and memorize pitches whenever you need. Start preferably with scales that have the most number of correspondent open strings. For instance, G, D, A, and C for the violin. Example. G major. Step nine, memorize intervals. Memorize and practice melodic intervals, scales, and arpeggios. This is a very helpful step for solidifying intonation. Examples, major second.
perfect fourth. Tip number five, practice very slowly and make sure you cover all the intervals in both major and minor scales. Step eight, build your intonation chart. You can do the math and match any pitch to its correct frequency with the help of a tuner. For example, if A is set to 440 hertz, the octave above will be twice this frequency, which means 880 hertz. A perfect fifth above will be found by multiplying the given frequency by three halves. In this case, we will have 660 hertz. There are many ways the frequency of a given pitch can be calculated. Here's a summary table that can help you out. Here's a complete table of frequencies for Pythagorean tuning when A is set to 440 hertz. Now the same for 441 and 442 hertz. If you need to check your intonation of your F sharp on E string when your A is set to 440 hertz, you can check the table and learn that it should equal 742.5 hertz. Now let's hear the difference between F sharp and G flat in Pythagorean tuning. F sharp, G flat, F sharp. Step 10, use equivalent and harmonics. Major and minor thirds and sixths and just intonation provide us with inharmonic equivalents in Pythagorean tuning. Their difference is minimal and should be ignored. For example, A sharp D flat G flat Note, the difference between inharmonic equivalents and just intonation in Pythagorean tuning is less than two cents. A schisma, almost imperceptible, even to a well-trained ear. Just for reference, here's a summary table of some interval ratios in just intonation. If we consider A 440 hertz, we have F sharp and just intonation equaling 366.66 hertz approximately, G flat and Pythagorean intonation equaling 366.25 hertz approximately. Difference between their frequencies is roughly 0.4 hertz in this octave. Step 11, find other pure intervals. Major seconds and minor sevenths in Pythagorean tuning are also considered justly tuned, belonging to just intonation. Examples, major second, minor seventh, minor sevenths in Pythagorean tuning represent the ratio 16 to nine and should not be confused with the minor seventh ratio of seven to four as both can be considered pure or belonging to just intonation. For example, 16 to nine ratio, seven to four ratio, major seconds in Pythagorean tuning represent the ratio nine to eight and should not be confused with the major second of ratio eight to seven, as both can be considered pure or belonging to just intonation. For example, nine to eight ratio, eight to seven ratio.
And now, just put what you've learned into practice. If you have any questions, contact APStringsChannel at gmail.com.